All right, you guys, so we already did a regular boat tour on the Seawind 1170. We are hole number one, boat name's Lori Sue, sailed 1,500 miles so far on her. But today we're gonna give you a more comprehensive, kind of a technical boat tour. We've done this on a few other boats. I think it works really well because people want to see way more detail of the boat. They wanna know the tankage and about the systems and how much storage there is and what it looks like in all the storage compartments and just where things live. So we're gonna do that today. Here it is, our boat, Lori Sue, Sea Wind 1170. While we have you here, we want to take a quick sec to let you know we just launched some new hoodies in the Tula shop, just in time for this colder weather. We do a little happy dance every time an order comes in. Thank you so much for your support. Now back to the tech tour. So I'll give you some specs on the boat first before we get started on the boat. It's kind of funny. We got a bunch of Seawinds in this marina here. Here's an 1190 and then a 1260 right next to us. So so a few different Sea Wind models all surrounding us, a bunch of other Sea Winds on the other docks. But our boat, the Sea Wind 1170, 11.7 .7 meters, so about 39 feet length overall, not including the bowsprit. The displacement is a very honest 2,200 pounds. Probably, that's probably light ship, you know, nothing aboard really. The mast is just under 62 feet tall above the water. Draft is three feet, nine inches. The overall beam is 21 feet, four inches. The bridge deck clearance is two feet, two inches. And one of the most impressive things about this boat, which we'll show you as we move inside later on, um, but the headroom throughout the boat is at least around six feet, five inches everywhere where you would realistically be standing. All right, so we'll start at the very front of the boat where we started our regular boat tour. So at the very front of the boat, we have our full-on carbon fiber bowsprit. They engineered it in a way where, like on most multi-holes, you have stays going from the bowsprit down to the holes, but they made all this strong enough where the bowsprit just inserts into this structure, which is called the laundron. The bowsprit is not retractable into the boat, but it's easily removable, and I just wanna show you guys how we can do that here. So we can take this six-inch inspection port off, and then there's a simple stainless steel pin in here we just pull that pin out so then i can just use this spinnaker tack line here and the spinnaker halyard and i'll just tie a knot here in reality we haven't moved removed this bowsprit at all for any like practical reason but it's nice to have it as an option because if you're in like a tight docking situation where you really are restricted on your length and you want to knock it down a few feet so it just slides out super easy and then here i'm going to use hopefully the spinnaker to hold it up. All right, so I'm not gonna take it all the way out, but I can see through the pinhole that we're right at the end here. There's about that much left in the cavity. And then if we wanted to, I would just tighten up on the spinnaker halyard a little bit so it supports the end. Then I'm able to pull it out and then just bring it right onto the boat. I mean, you can see how much of the pole is actually in, inserted into the laundron. So we'll put it back in here. We'll just slide it right back in. All right, got the stainless pin in and just put our inspection port. And there is a, a weep pole under here just in case you get water inside the laundron. It's not a big deal, just drain right out the bottom. So we use the bowsprit solely to fly the asymmetric spinnaker off the end. So the tack line comes right through here and we have a little clutch right there. And we actually have a longer tack line that we could lead all the way aft if we want to, but I've just been working it right off of this clutch and, and the cleat behind it for extra security. And then the, the spinnaker halyard right here. Pull this tack line tight. So now we have our tack and halyard for the spinnaker just ready to go. Anytime we want to fly it, it takes us maybe, I don't know, five minutes to set up. We could really launch it inside of five minutes if we're kind of moving, everything's going smooth. So just back from our bowsprit, like I said, we have the laundron. So the screecher attaches to the end of the laundron. We talked about this in a previous video, but we use a spinnaker for light downwind sailing and the screecher for light reaching and slightly upwind work. And then just behind that, we have our jib on a self tacker for any wind that's not necessarily light or just you know normal sailing screecher is on a continuous furler which makes it really easy to deploy and put away 
and of course our jib is on a furler as well. Just back from that, we continue back onto, I don't know what you'd call this, maybe part of the Laundron or the catwalk, but we have our Mantis anchor, the M2 55 pound, fits perfectly in here along with the Mantis swivel that we've used before and have grown to love, as well as our Mantis bridle, which we tweaked a little, we made it a little bit shorter, um, connects to those two bows, and then the Mantis hook here. So a um, really solid anchoring system. We have about 180 feet of chain, I believe, and that chain runs down this channel, and this is just a big wet locker here, but the chain runs through there, into a hole there, into this locker, which houses the anchor windlass, and then it drops the chain right down below it into the chain locker, and there's a panel. So if you go into the wet locker in front of the mast, you can see a panel that you can take off and access a chain locker, which is honestly massive in there. You can fit a lot more chain if you wanted to. And we also made a few tweaks in this area. So I have this little Ronston pouch that we keep a hose in. I modified the Quick Connect uh, fresh water fitting here to kind of always be connected to a hose, um, which isn't on right now because we're using it somewhere else, but it almost is always connected here. And this is our freshwater rinse. We have plenty of fresh water aboard, plus a high output Rainman water maker. So I figure, you know what, let's just put a freshwater rinse up here because it'll preserve the life of the chain. So we're rinsing it down. The chain lives wet in its wet locker and its chain locker, but it's all fresh water. So hopefully it lasts a bit longer than if it was all salt water. So right next to the anchor windlass, we obviously have our up foot pedal switch and back at the helm, we have our up and down switch. So while we're here, let me show you these two wet lockers. So this one, we just keep our spare anchor underneath our spinnaker. You know, we have a spare anchor with like two or 300 feet of road on it. And then our asymmetric spinnaker lives in there. These are pretty deep lockers. In here, I showed you obviously the chain. We have a few, uh, few spare diesel cans, a bunch of life preservers. This is our rainwater catchment hose, and then a few small gas cans for the dinghy. A little water filter for when we're filling up the fresh water tanks from the dock. And then on this side, we keep all of our fenders and dock lines and kind of some spare lines as well. So real deep compartments forward, all with built-in drains that go directly overboard with little covers so that no water can kind of smash their way in. Aft of the anchor windlass locker, we have our toy box. So this is where we house, house all our kites and wings and foils and everything like that. Also has some drains. This is where you would access the chain locker. You just take off this panel, get into the chain locker there. It's massive in there. All right, so while we're in this wet locker right in front of the mast, um, we have our diesel fuel deck fill. It's pretty nice that it's in you know, under the hatch, less of a chance to get water intrusion in there. We have our diesel tank, which is in the nacelle under the bridge deck. And for us, that's 95 gallons. Future 1170s are gonna change that back and go to uh, 68 gallons each in each of the bilges in the hulls. And the water tank will be somewhere like in a nacelle or somewhere in the central in the boat. Just behind our wet locker, we have obviously, like we showed you guys before, our self-tacking jib sheet track. And then on the mast, we just have some halyards that we don't use too often, but we have our jib halyard that's usually just set. We rarely tweak that. Our screecher halyard, and then our ASIM uh, spinnaker halyard with a big Lumar self-telling winch. Every time we fly a spinnaker, we obviously are on it here. Other than that, these halyards just kind of stay. Maybe once in a while, I'll hop up here and retension them or loosen them if I know we're not gonna be sailing for a long period of time. So if you guys have been watching Previous videos, you know we had a little bit of issue with the gas struts for these windows, but we got proper gas struts in place now. The windows can be fully raised. They stay in position how they should be. Incredible flow through the boat there. As we walk back, we can just get a little glimpse of the cabin top where we have the rainwater collection system. We talked about this in previous videos. The rain comes down the barrier sear into the channel and drains through the front there. 990 watts of flexible solar panels on the cabin top all the way back and we can walk all up and down this cabin top. We can walk on the flexible solar panels, no problem. We can do whatever we need to do up here. Big, huge working area where you can step all around, which is pretty nice. And then handholds where you need them, especially as you step down that step and come back onto the deck. We talked before about the really nice flat decks, flush mount hatches with drains around them. Up here, we also have our waste tank pump out deck fitting here. 
So this is for the starboard head, which is right under us. And then the waste tank is just in front deck fill there, vents for it right there. Just behind that on the same side, on the starboard side, we have our freshwater deck fittings, one on each side in the same location, starboard side, port side. Our water tanks are in the bilges. I'll show you where we have access to them in a little bit. Our water tanks from what we're told are about 95 gallons each. Future 1170s are gonna have their water tank, like I said before, in the nacelle under the bridge deck. It's gonna be about 132 gallons. We can continue walking back here, our shrouds, our jib furler line, which it runs through a clutch here. And then something that Seawind is known for, obviously all lines leading aft. So we have our set of clutches here, outhaul, spare one, reef three, reef two, jib sheet, and then our screecher sheet here, a Lumar 40 winch, and then a Lumar 50 winch, both self-tailing. Those are both manual, but we have an electric one on the other side, which has been amazing. So we have this huge bin, compartment uh, for all the lines to keep them nice and organized for when we're not using them and it really keeps the rest of the cockpit pretty clean neat organized really just contains all the working lines to this general area even it, when we're actively sailing you know we might have a screecher out and the screecher sheets laying on the step here but everything else is organized in their compartments. A life ring on each side. Here's one of our e -perbs here. So all our electronics are B&G and we have a bunch of displays. We'll show you on that side, but we made sure on the secondary helm over here, we had one display uh, just so that when we're sailing from here, we can put whatever we want on this, this display. Usually it's the wind compass. So we can just keep track of the true wind and parent wind and the angles and everything like that while we're sailing. You can get engine controls on this side, but we just kept it a little simple and our engine controls are on that side. Both helm seats have this awesome backrest, which makes it super functional. Best helm seats we've ever sat in. And then if we open up underneath this helm seat compartment, we have our propane, nine pound each. And then down to this solenoid switch, propane runs to our stove and oven and grill as well. And then this side's just some storage. We put our PFDs in here and some extra lines. We showed you guys the original boat came with a, kind of a skillet grill that we didn't really like. It was a little too small. Um, you can't really close the lid over it while you were cooking. So we added this, this magma grill on top of the lid and we got rid of that one. We actually took it out. So now we have access to anything in here from the top here or from this side. So lots of storage under there. Under there, it's a little bit sloppy right now. We've been in like cleaning and work mode a little bit. So we'll have to organize that a bit. A lot of people were concerned when we saw this grill, how close it was to this uh, gel coat Targa. And we've been monitoring it closely. It barely gets warm at all. I'll keep monitoring it, but there's no worry of this getting too hot at all at this point. Barely, barely gets warm. Underneath where Jetty's sitting right here, we have a ton of storage. It runs the whole length of this bench. We access it from right here. This is where we keep like a lot of our fishing stuff, our shore power cord, our gaff, our rain curtains, our side rain curtains. And it goes all the way under here. We have a few baskets of fishing stuff, a dive mask. Underneath this, you, there's panels actually where you can take out some of this stuff. You pull up the panels and you have access to the carbon steering rod that links the two steering systems together. We have our dinghy davits, which are mounted directly under the cabin top, which is awesome. One of my favorite features about this boat from the previous 11, uh, or sea winds rather, is that it's a fixed cabin top that goes all the way back rather than solar panels like on brackets back here. Dinghy davits are mounted up there and it's a four to one block and tackle on each side. We have quite a big dinghy, probably pushing it on weight back here. It's been working fine for us. I can pull up the engine side with the four to one block and tackle, but I have to put a lot of muscle into it. Sometimes, even though it's not recommended, I do run the line through the spinnaker block and to the electric winch, and that makes it a lot easier. And then we have these little dinghy brackets that the dinghy tubes kind of snug into really nice and we cinch up some lines to keep the dinghy nice and tight into those brackets. It's a really good secure system. If we were going like on an ocean crossing or something, I would do like an additional strap around the whole dinghy and then back to these pad eyes and kind of cinch it up and nice and tight and on an angle a little bit. Might even take the engine off and put it on another bracket or somewhere else on the boat. And we installed some rod holders ourselves, hold all our fishing rods and our pole spears, boat hooks and deck brush poles. And another thing that Sea Wind is known for, which I, again, Again, really, really like. I just don't understand why more catamarans don't do it, but they have the main sheet track on top of the coach roof here. So here's the traveler control. So I can grab the winch handle and come here and I can easily just pull the traveler 
over to whatever side of the boat I need it on. Get some sun on these solar panels. And then the port side uh, pretty much matches the other side, but with some different controls. We have the main halyard, the main sheet, reef one, the topping lift, and the line to pull up the trifold door, as well as our screecher sheet. Again, a Lumar self-telling 40, and then a Lumar 50, but this one's electric, which is incredible, especially for pulling up the main. We mounted these little mesh pockets here and then a water bottle one on that side. Keep our like sunscreen and sunglasses and everything we have out here while we're sailing nice and organized. So over on the port helm here, we have our engine controls, our compass, our engine tacks and start and stop buttons, all that stuff. Some like nav light buttons, courtesy lights, like little red lights on the floor for nighttime when uh, we need to be able to see, but we don't want to blind ourselves with white lights. And then our B&G electronics, our big 12 inch Zeus display, which is just inside this helm window, which when we're sailing, we take it out here and then we bring it over to its little home on this side. tuck it in there nice and secure. And then we do the same with the starboard helm window if we want to tuck it into its little home. Now we have full on access to our Zeus display, our Vesper Cortex VHF AAS right there. And then just our mini Triton displays here so we can display some additional information. I like to have our chart here, a lot of the important numbers on the side here, and then like our, uh, our wind compass here. And then maybe, I don't know, our autopilot controls and autopilot numbers here. We also have these windows just above us, so I can generally see whatever, whenever I'm on the windward side, whether it's here or there, I can see the top two telltales of the jib or whatever head sail we're flying, you know, say it'd be the screecher. And then I can see most of the telltales on the windward side of the main as well. So I can tell how good we're trimmed just from this position right here. And then lastly, like I mentioned before, we have the anchor windless up down switch here. So I could potentially raise anchor from here, but because we're double handed. We always have someone on the bow when we're raising or lowering the anchor just to keep an eye, kind of see our chain marks and know how much chain we're letting out. One thing we do wish we got was a chain counter so that actually when you deploy the anchor, you don't need someone on the bow watching your anchor marks. You could just watch the chain counter and know how much road you're letting out for the depth that you're anchoring in. So I'll show you what's in this helm seat here. Again, you have the backrest that goes both ways there. And then if we lift up this helm seat, we have the world's biggest cooler. A little bit of things stored in here are hats, but with the drain in the bottom. Some people convert this to like a freezer or a fridge or even a dive compressor. We don't know what we're gonna use this as yet. I mean, you'd never wanna put like bloody fish or anything in there. It'd be nice to like fill it with ice and have just a bunch of beverages if you have like, you know, a bunch of people on board or whatever, but obviously ice doesn't last forever. It'd be cool to convert it into a fridge. I'm not really sure what we'll do with that space yet. Last few things I want to show you out here are just, these are just uh, compartments that vent into the engine compartment. So you can close them if you're really washing down the boat good, or if it's cold, you know, you're not going to be using the engine for a while, then open them when the engines are running, just help ventilate the engine compartment down there. And we have our shore power plug here, 30 amp for this boat. And then on either side, we have a manual bilge pump. God forbid we ever have to use that. So in really nasty weather, it's still a really protected space to helm from. We could put our rain side clear curtains up and they go up into a track here and then just snap along here. And we actually still have access to the winch and lines around the winch because it kind of ends here and goes around the winch. So we can still use our control lines when the side clears are up. And we may even, depending how wet and rough it is, you know, put our VHF back inside here and then put our helm window back in. And then we still have our display through the helm window, or if we need to do something on display, just hop right in here, spin it over, and we have full access to the display there or the VHF. And if we still want a VHF out here in nasty weather, we can just grab our remote Vesper Cortex unit from the nav station and bring it out here and have it with us. Maybe it's in the pocket right next to us or something. Still be able to steer from here in really nasty weather. She says, I don't want to go in nasty weather. You don't want to go in nasty weather, huh? All right, let's go inside. We'll show you some more features of the boat. All right, we're in the main salon area. First off, I want to show you the nav station. 
lifting desk here, ton of storage. We have just our pens and pencils and all our Mantis headlamps and just random. This is kind of like our junk drawer, but I like to think it's a little more organized than our junk drawer. Originally, I'm sure, meant for paper charts. Most people have a board and should have a board, but anyone rarely uses anymore. So we have them somewhere, but not in here. This has also been our desk for the past six months on the boat. We have our charging outlet here and we can see everything around us while we're here. 120 volt outlets. We have our C-Zone digital switching display. So from the di this display, we can control like almost anything on the boat. First off, we can see our tank levels, our house battery levels, our fuel tank levels. We can swipe over and see what the solar production is actually doing at the moment, where our two AGM start batteries are at. Um, we can kind of control some different things from here and we can set zones and modes and things like that. So we can press cruising, it'll turn everything on in cruising mode. So turn the electronics on, our chart plotter and displays, our VHF, you know, we could go dock mode, you know, anchor mode, whatever it is. I haven't played around too much with those custom settings yet, but I look forward to checking out and sharing the possibilities of that with, with you guys. And then from here, you can turn on or off everything individually. All the controls, all the 12 volt controls, basically right here on this display with redundancy, and I'll show you where that is. But basically, if this thing ever failed, you could simply pop out a blade fuse and pop it into place and just override it manually. So you still have the redundancy and assurance that um, you can control whatever you need, even if this display fails or the digital switching system fails in general. Like I showed you before, our wireless Vesper Cortex VHF handset and then an extra Triton display. This I highly recommend to anyone thinking about having an extra display at a nav table. It's incredible for us because we're sailing shorthanded, just the two of us usually. So we'll use this as a day bed when we're offshore. We'll put this thing here and be a long day bed. Fully be able to sleep here when you're off watch, but you're, you can see the person at the helm. You can hear the person at the helm easily. You're right in the center of the boat. If anything starts to kind of sound funny, I can just glance over at the display and see what my true wind speed is, my apparent wind speed, the boat speed, and just make sure everything's in check. Or maybe there's a situation that say I'm off watch and Sierra's on watch and she's got her hands full and I see like our speed climbing or the wind speed climbing because a squall is coming. I can just kind of see that. All right, we got to do something, get up and um, help manage the boat. So highly recommend that, it's been awesome. And then we have our AC, our 120 volt panel, charger, inverter, heater, spare, which will be a water maker switch, our GPOs, shore power, bilge pumps, bilge alarms, and then our Weems and Plath, a tricolor slash anchor slash strobe light. So whichever setting we wanna turn it on, we have that here. And then right down here, we have our battery switches, our house battery, our two start batteries, an emergency parallel switch, and then we have our windlass and winch uh, fuse. And then from there, all under here is basically storage and where the batteries are. So I can pull this thing off here. Usually I'll just pick it up because I can access whatever I need under there, all my hardware bits and pieces under there. So just like our files, hardware, our display covers, which we'll put on. Just a bunch of random stuff there. This is all our safety stuff, extra PFDs, a spare fan, dinghy nav light, some AIS uh, MOB devices, extra flares, things like that in there. And then these are our batteries. We have two 400 amp hour lithium master volt house batteries. So we have a total of 800 amp hour uh, lithium uh, for our house bank. And then we have two AGM start batteries, one for each engine. They are also master volt. All that's been working incredibly well. And I'll show you guys with the master volt lithium upgrade. You also get the high output alternators on the engines and I'll show you guys that as well in a minute. Let's cover this up. We'll take a peek under the rest of the storage here. Um, you also have access behind here. If we just, I don't want to pull it off because it's all snaps and a little bit of a pain to put back on. But you can pull this off and there's a little access panel to back here, which kind of leads into that same battery compartment there. We can move these pillows aside. We could swing this table around if we wanted to, but we have another lid here and it gives us partial access to that same compartment we were just looking at and partial access to this other big compartment, which we have more access to if we remove this panel. So here's the ottoman. This also has storage. This is where all jetty stuff is. Usually. Usually. 
yeah, everything. yeah. The boat show just happened, so everything's a little uh, where pe other people put them, and not necessarily us, which is fine. So we can swing this table around however we want. This is something else is pretty cool. Swing it around however you want, over there, over there, over there. And then if we have a lot of guests and people want to sleep up here, we can push the table down. Jetty, watch out, you're gonna get scared. Come here. And this becomes a big bed. Put this back over here. And then I can show you what's under this one. So again, this is like, I have my ratchet set under here. I have a bunch of uh, rigging, like splicing kits and stuff in there. Just a bunch of random caulking and grease and stuff in there, just like tool stuff. So this is a really massive compartment. I just have some power tools in here right now, a bunch of spare plumbing from doing the water maker. I think it's a little disorganized right now. A bunch of spare parts in there as well. Eventually we'll have an air conditioning compressor that lives in this compartment and we have access to the refrigerator if we like kind of dig back there and get down that way. So again, lots of storage through this whole area. All right, so we're in the galley now. We went through this on our other tour, but I'm gonna go through everything really quick again, and we might be repeating ourselves, but we'll also dive a little bit deeper into it. So let's open every cabinet just so you can get a good idea of what's in what. First off, we have all this like open storage space, spices and whatever, French press in there. Lots of storage back there. And then we could open these, or sorry, that one individually. You see our little, uh, <laughs> our little gift from our friends, Odd Life. At the boat show, a bunch of our friends uh, came on the boat. It's a little, uh, a little messy right now. But this is real life, people. This isn't polished perfect. This is how it is. Not necessarily this messy. We're usually a little more, <laughs> but we're not trying to polish it all up for you guys. Let me move over into here, just a bunch more storage. Dry goods, some Australian wine that our friend Mike from Sea Wind brought us. You got cracks that open. I know, Thanks. baby. Top opening freezer, again, really large. Freezer, go all the way back there. Yeah, there you go, keep going. Pretty big. And I'll show you, that's all the squid that we caught in Block Island that I'm saving for bait. <laughs> you didn't want to vacuum seal it and not take up our giant <laughs> I guess we could have, we haven't used our vacuum sealer yet. So the compressor for the freezer is under here. So we just opened this thing. It's got two vents there. So here's the intake. It's pretty cool. They actually like piped off the intake away from the hot uh, compressor over here. Try to make it a little more efficient, which is nice. So it's got a separate intake vent and a separate like exhaust vent almost. And you feel the fan pulling in fresh air. So good access to that compressor there for the freezer. So again, you can see all our storage here. Bowls, plates, cups, pots, pans serving dishes, cookware, and then some like paper plates and stuff. Stove and oven that you saw already. Under here, just our, some more storage. So some a vacuum sealer and then some element. If we go back a little bit further, yet some more storage. So we got some Tupperwares in here, some like dish rags, lighter, oven mitts. And then here's a real messy one. Excuse this one. We got a full garbage here, so I gotta get rid of this sucker. Um, but under here is, so it's under the sink, we have a bunch of cleaning products. Our Seagull water filter, just some nice shelves. I really like these shelves to help separate the, the space. Our Seagull water spigot. And then we have our isotherm fridge. It's tucked into this compartment. The compressor is just built into the backside of this fridge. And then we have an extra little vent up here to help that circulation. Keep going, some more like kitchen tools. This is some cookbooks and access to our starboard freshwater pump and accumulator tank. So we have two freshwater pumps because we have two freshwater tanks, which is nice, a little bit of redundancy there. So just take a step back, I'll show you. Here's where our freshwater tank, at least where the access is. So it's a built-in tank into the bilge. Like I said, a future 1170s is gonna be a little bit different. This is probably gonna be where the diesel tanks are and they're gonna be like a, a plastic tank um, that's kind of set into the bilge rather than fiberglass into the bilge. So our freshwater tank, same thing on the other side. Um, access panel right there if we need to get in there or clean it or anything like that. And then all throughout the boat, we have really, we have a lot of bilge access and honestly, we can use it for a lot of storage. Oh, we've got a little water on that side. It's the, yeah, just a ton of room down here. We have some plastic containers. We used for some like dry goods in the plastic containers. Just really a ton of access ton of storage in there. So as we move forward, we probably showed all you guys this already, but just more storage for the guests. More build storage down there. And then if we come forward more, storage closet with some extra, what do you got in here? Linens or whatever? Hanging locker. So you got some hangers in there too. 
two fans on this side, air conditioning, vent, shelves. Uh, let's go back here a little bit further. So we're in the starboard side forward guest head right now. Electric flush head. How nice is that? It is nice. Salt water electric flush head. Sink storage under the sink here. And up forward here is where our holding tank is. So I believe it's about a 35 gallon holding tank. I will find that out and overlay it right here. Um, Cause I don't know off the top of my head, but something like 35 gallons. And then we have our toilet flush pump there and a macerator as well under the, the toilet itself, I believe. The holding tanks are cool because you can pump them out from the deck through the deck fitting we showed you before, but you can also discharge them overboard if you're more than three miles offshore, like you're supposed to be. There's just two handles, one at the through hole and one right up under the tank, and we're well above the water line here, so you just open the two handles and all the waste, just gravity feeds overboard through the nice big, what is this, two inch, inch and a half, two inch discharge hose. And this is a wet head, so shower is, comes out of the sink right here. And then we have our little, oop, must be off on the switch, but this is our uh, shower pump. It's a diaphragm sump pump. So we walk back to the aft side of the boat, the back of the boat. This is the other guest cabin. They got their own lights, their own fan right here, a hatch in the back there that you can put a screen on and then a hatch here as well so you can get some cross ventilation still. Under the bunk here, this initial one, we just have the hot water tank and the hot water tank gets heated either by shore power if you're plugged in or by the starboard engine which is right behind it here. Obviously some more storage down there and some more storage in the bilge here. And then we have the engine compartment here. So if I'm just doing my uh, fluid checks then I'll just kind of fold this over and there's a big access panel here. I'll just lift it up. Put it on top of this cushion here. And now I can see my coolant. I can see, uh, we have a light here too. So I can see my coolant. I can check my oil, oil through the dipstick there and I can check my sail drive fluid. But if I really need to service this engine or do anything, I just take this cushion off, bring it back to the galley and take this off and bring it back there. Now I have full on access to the whole engine. So here's what it looks like with the panel, the whole panel off, complete access all the way around the engine. So these engines are diesel, they're Yanmar 3YM30s, which are 29 horsepower engine. We have the SD25 sail drives on them and it's kind of funny, they turn the whole engine around so the sail drives are towards the front of the boat rather than on a lot of boats are towards the back of the boat. And they just did that um, to get the placement of where they wanted to put the engines uh, perfect. So like I said, the hot water can be heated by the engine. It just gets teed off of uh, the coolant system here. And that goes into the hot water tank through a heat exchanger in the tank and then back um, to the coolant system on the engine. The engines come standard with, I believe it's a 60 amp alternator. This is a standard alternator. And like I said before, because we got the lithium package from Mastervolt, we got an upgraded Mastervolt alternator in addition to the normal one. And the upgraded alternator is 120 amps. So between the two alternators, you're making quite a bit of um, electricity from just this single engine, which, you know, just a couple hours of motoring charges the batteries up full, no matter where we're at pretty much. But she doesn't, she associates me opening these engine compartments with checking the fluids and like she thinks we're gonna get underway. So she's all anxious about what, what we're doing next. We also have a little storage closet with shelves on this side. So if we have guests staying here, we got a little storage closet for them. And then just a little storage cubby under here as well. Nice little guest berth. Who wants to stay with us? So we're gonna go down the porthole now. And we'll start off right in the back of the boat here. So again, another electric flush head. So I recently installed our Rainman water maker. So under the sink, we have our valves, our pre-filters, and then the pump is actually right up in there. And we added some vents as well. Just make sure that compartment stays a little bit ventilated when that pump's running hot. And then we keep going back into the shower here. For, we have our control panel for our Rainman water maker, nice and neat installed in the corner there. And then we get into our engine compartment. We can go here. So these are cool as little. If you have a fire in the engine compartment, you can keep the door shut and stick a hose or stick a fire extinguisher through there. 
to kind of contain the fire and try to put it out, God forbid. So same thing on this side, 3YM30 SD25 cell drive. If you just valve and valve, gravity discharge or deck discharge. I didn't show you guys the deck fitting, but it's on the back of the boat on the port side here. And this tank's a little bit bigger, I believe. I believe I'll put the capacity of this holding tank right here in the text. So we all also have access to our rudder quadrant here and our B&G autopilot, which is attached to it, as well as the carbon arm that comes across and connects the two rudders. And then on the other side, you can see that the rudder angle indicator there. Oh yeah, and then if you look, not at me, but just above the door there, I don't know if you can see it, that's our membranes for our Rayman water maker that we just installed but easily accessible still if we have to. And same thing, high output alternator down there, standard alternator. Um, this is a hose for like our, our transom shower, raw water intake screen there, fuel filter, coolant overflow reservoir thing. That's about it. So again, same uh, fresh water tank, just like on the other side, there's the access on this side and then just storage in all these compartments here. Sierra's got it really nice and organized. So we'll just open up each one so you can get a good idea. And then we, we usually have storage baskets on here as well, nice and neat with like some towels or linens or whatever in there. Make this space a little more functional. And then again, more storage here. This is like our exercise gear. Oh, I put my foul weather jacket in there. A little messy, but you know, real life stuff here. This is our port freshwater pump and accumulator tank. So freshwater pump, accumulator tank. Some more storage, this is all my tools. Installed a nice shelf there, bunch of tools down there. And then this is the heart of the electrical system. Maybe not the heart, maybe the veins. Veins of the electrical system, because the battery is hard. So this is uh, our NEMA backbone, our autopilot controller, um, our DC to DC charger, and then this is all the C-Zone uh, fuse block. So again, like I said before, if the display ever failed or the digital switching ever failed and you wanted to turn on your BNG autopilot, you just pop out this blade fuse and put it in the slot right above it and pop it right in. You, you manually override the digital switching and you can get anything you need to work. So redundancy, which was uh, really important to me when we were trying to decide if we should have C-Zone on our boat. So glad we have that. And then in this cabinet, we have our charger inverter, our two MPPT solar controllers, or just our Starlink that's kind of put in here poorly for now. And then uh, just a bunch of our fuses back there, another fuse block down there. And this is the master, master bunk? This is our room. Um, two fans, bookshelves, big island style bunk, tons of headroom. So you could like sit up fully in bed and especially for us, I'm only 5'8", so I have a ton of, head, uh, ton of room over my head. You know, you could sit up and read in bed and just have plenty of room. I promise we do live on the boat full time. The boat show just ended. So we are kind of getting all our stuff back on the boat, reorganized, got to get our sheets back and got to get moved back on the boat. But again, same thing. We have just bilge panels, access panels everywhere with a ton of storage in the bilges, which we honestly don't use we just don't fill up keep as much weight off as possible we got plenty of cruising stuff and all our personal items and you'll see in here like here's a bunch of our clothes storage in there a little drawer more storage and then we have storage in here storage in here storage in here our shoe compartment. and especially storage in here it's a really deep closet. We kind of have this a little too maxed out. It's only maxed out because all that stuff goes on the counter. Oh yeah, this is the stuff that goes on the counter. So this goes as deep as down here where my foot is and it goes pretty far back as well. So plenty of storage for all our clothes and linens and everything like that. All our hatches open and we also of course got the option to have the blackout or the bug screen on each of these overhead hatches, which is incredible. So we get a ton of breeze through the boat. 
I'm gonna check Instagram real quick because I asked you guys if there was anything specific you wanna see on this video. So I'm just gonna check my Instagram messages and see if there's anything in there that you let us know that I forgot. If you guys aren't following us on Instagram, you know, give us a follow so we post a little bit of different things there, some short videos and some little more up-to-date stuff, although we're very up-to-date with these videos at the moment. So let's go check that real quick. Something I didn't really touch on, but we have USB outlets throughout the boat. So there's one right there. It's just kind of scattered throughout the boat. We have one right here, right next to the Zeus display. And then you've seen a couple of the other ones as we walk around. So I just checked uh, my Instagram messages. I don't think there's anything that I got so far that we didn't already cover. One thing we didn't really show you is Again, something else that Sea Wind is like known for, which is their trifold door system. So you can open up a single door, both doors, or all three doors. So we're getting a lot of questions on like solar, is it enough, batteries, like some stuff like that. Like a lot of it's a little bit relative. We have 990 watts of solar, all flexible panels. Ideally, I think we'd have two more, a little bit more. Just because the flexible panels are a little less efficient from what we're used to with harder panels. I mean, it's nice, I'll take the trade off, but I just would want to add two more just to kind of make up for that inefficiency but 990 is a pretty good amount and then paired with the lithium battery bank which absolutely is incredible 400 amp hours of master volt each battery again master volt 400 amp hours each battery at 12 volts so that's 800 amp hours of lithium that paired with the extra alternators on each engine basically each engine it's its own mini generator so that system is incredible would 100% do that again and then probably just try to max out the solar according to your, your budget and what the room allows keeping in balance with how many MPPT controllers you need but we could have two more panels and keep the same two controllers so that'd be a good thing let me know if you think I missed anything if you have any additional questions I'll try to answer them in future videos I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope it was valuable and keep watching make sure to subscribe so we'll see you guys in the future